Learning Objective 2-6, prepare a consolidation worksheet. So this is really where the rubber hits the road now, and we're going to go through a full year with this consolidation, and I'll show you how you would prepare a consolidation worksheet for it. And um, this is really the key piece of the chapter, and then once you're able to do this, then in Chapter 3 we're going to add more and more, and we're going to add little features as we go along. Um, but this is a very, this is really once we've done the balance sheet now now we're going to do a full consolidation worksheet with a full P&L or income statement and a statement of retained earnings. So what this does is it provides an easy way to combine the different financial statements and to make adjustments for things that the individual companies wouldn't do but which you would need to do for the consolidation. So we take the the account balances from the parent and from the subsidiary and then we combine them together into a single company and then we use the numbers from this worksheet to prepare our financial statement so it's going to follow this format where we have one column for the parent one for the subsidiary our elimination entries or debits and credits and then it all adds or subtracts together into the consolidated financial statements and I hope you remember from the previous courses that net income from the income statement flows into the statement of retained earnings and any retained earnings flows into the balance sheet, retained earnings on the balance sheet. The articulation of financial statements is very important to doing this because you got to understand as you're going through it how the income statement ties into the statement of retained earnings through net income and how ending retained earnings is going to wind up on the balance sheet. And these financial statements need to articulate, meaning that they need to fit together. Numbers on one need to match the other. And the consolidation entries themselves would do eliminations, would eliminate double counting that you would otherwise have if you add these whole things. Now, these consolidation entries, I'm going to bring, mention this again and again, these are not journal entries. And in fact, in my notes, in videos, I'm very careful not to present these as journal entries. I only show them in the worksheet. Now, in the textbook, they'll show them as journal entries. In the in Connect, they present them as journal entries. I don't really like doing that because to me, they're not really journal entries. They don't go into the general ledger, but rather they're elimination entries that just go into this worksheet and they never really go on any sets of books. And that's the whole thing about this consolidation worksheet, really, is that this is just a worksheet and this doesn't go into any general ledger. So normally when you record journal entries, they go into a general ledger and then they're all added, sliced and diced and stuff and you get your financial statements. What we're doing here is we're taking those financial statements from different companies, different sets of books and combining them. So these journal entries that we're recording right here in the worksheet can't go on any one set of books because they apply to multiple books. A debit could apply to one set of books and the credit could apply to another set of books. So it's this is only going to be done on a worksheet and it's not actually done in any specific set of books. So here we have Peerless and Special again and this is their common stock at the beginning which was the number that we saw in the previous balance sheet and retained earnings. And then this should really be 2021 because I'm updating these. And this is income for Peerless was 140, income for Special was 50, and dividends were 60 for Peerless and 30 in the first year. And then we're going to, I'm sorry, in year two, year two is 2021, year three is going to be, actually it's, this is kind of year one because we had the beginning of the year of year one was the previous balance sheet, and then we're going to go to year two. So Peerless Products Acquisition of Special Foods for Cash. It doesn't say it here, but it happens to be for $300,000 because it's always going to be $300. Actually, it's going to be, we're going to buy, in subsequent examples, we're only going to buy 80%. So that's going to be $300,000 cash. I'm sorry, it's not listed here as a specific amount, but that's what it is. That's what the book says. And then when we 
Peerless is going to use the equity method. So we talked about the equity method. Now let's see it in action. Special Foods had 50000 in net income, and Peerless is using the equity method. So Peerless is going to debit investment in Special Foods for the 50000 in income and credit income from Special Foods for 50000 Now the truth is, is that Peerless can also use a cost method, which is similar to fair value, except you don't adjust to fair value, where they simply record dividends as dividend income. So in theory, Peerless could do that, in which case the consolidation would be very different. If you go to the appendix of the book, it'll explain to you how you would account for that. Um, we're using the equity method, so the dividend of 30 from special will be a debit to cash of 30, and then a credit to investment in special foods under the equity method of 30. And here's our consolidation. And now we have all the different financial statements to worry about. We have the income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheet. So the income statement here, income you can see ties into statement of retained earnings right here. And the balance sheet, um, ending balance of retained earnings, ties into retained earnings over here. And I made you little arrows so you can kind of see. Um, net income goes here and retained earnings on the statement of retained earnings goes to retained earnings on the balance sheet. And the format that this is going to follow again, <clears throat> for the income statement, it'll be plus, 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 minus the debt. I mean, plus, plus, plus the, I mean, minus the, because sales is a credit, right? So you would subtract the debits and add the credits to get your consolidated amounts. like so um, because the income statement sales is a credit phenomenon right and then expenses are debits and all the expenses here are negative so you're going to add you're going to subtract your debits and credit add your credits in order to get your consolidated balance statement of retained earnings is the same thing because retained earnings has a credit balance it's going to be plus plus minus plus equals a consolidated column the balance sheet on the other hand is going to be different. The balance sheet is um, the asset side of the balance sheet is is a debit. So therefore, you're going to go plus 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 minus. You're going to add the debits and subtract the credits. And the liabilities and and stockholders equity side of the balance sheet is a credit phenomenon. So you're going to go plus, plus, minus, plus. Just to keep in mind what direction everything is going in. So students usually remember everything here is plus, plus, minus, plus, except for the asset side of the balance sheet, which is plus, plus, minus, plus. I mean, the balance sheet assets, which is plus, 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 minus. So let's go through what some of these elimination entries are. And there is what I call the big elimination entry. And what we do here is we offset income from special foods. We're going to debit income from special foods that was recorded by Peerless. Remember where Peerless recorded this? They recorded it with this journal entry right here. So now it's appearing on Peerless's income statement here. We're going to eliminate that because if we add these two income statements together, this is going to be double counted and we don't want to double count anything. I've got to eliminate all of the um, special side of the statement of retained earnings because the only retained earnings that counts is retained earnings of the parent. All the retained earnings of special belongs to the parent. So I'm going to debit the beginning balance of retained earnings and I'm going to credit the dividends paid by special to peerless because that doesn't exist if this is all one company. 
dividends paid between the entities aren't really dividends and they need to be eliminated. I'm also going to eliminate investment in special foods by crediting it. This has a debit balance, so I need to credit it. And I'm going to eliminate common stock of the sub. Now, when we add these things up, some of the numbers are going to need to flow down through the spreadsheet. So this $50 here to net income is going to flow down to the statement of retained earnings because net income flows down to the statement of retained earnings. So this 50 is going to go down here just like this 190 here went down to the statement of retained earnings. So that's where that 50 came from. And this here is going to go down to retained earnings in the balance sheet over here. Likewise, the 30 is also going to go down to retained earnings on the balance sheet. Right there. So now we're almost done here. The last thing we got to do is we have to eliminate beginning accumulated depreciation. If you remember from the last video, beginning accumulated depreciation was $300,000. That's over here. $300,000. So the thing is, is that accumulated depreciation is still on specials books, even though it doesn't belong on the consolidated books because this is accumulated depreciation that was recorded by special before Peerless bought them. So $300,000 worth of accumulated depreciation was recorded by special before Peerless bought them, and therefore it's not really accumulated depreciation to the new consolidated entity. So I've got to take it back off again. It's not 320. Where did 320 come from? Well, what the company did is record another 20 in depreciation. Here it is. C20 in depreciation expense. That's good depreciation because that depreciation was recorded after Peerless bought special, so it's really depreciation. So the really cool thing about this depreciation elimination entry is it's always going to be for the same amount until you get rid of the equipment. And when we're doing problems in this class, we never get rid of the equipment. So it's always going to be $300, $300,000, whatever. Um, and that's the other journal entry. So we have this big elimination entry here, which I'm going to put into yellow. I have this big elimination entry here and I let's see how it adds together. So for the consolidated column, I'm going to go plus, plus, minus, plus, all the way down. And very important to notice here that Peerless's net income is the same as consolidated. It should be the same because Peerless's income, Peerless's their own income, Peerless's own income, plus the income from special. And when we consolidate it, it should also be Peerless and Special's income. It's just reported differently because sales is for Peerless and Special together. Cost of goods sold is for Peerless and Special together, and so on and so forth. But it's important to notice this 190 and this 190 are going to be... Here's another little arrow. Let me make it a different color so that everything is... There you go. So this should be the same. And the ending balance over here, retained earnings, we're going to want to be the same also. And again, these are going to flow down like so. And ending balance of retained earnings should be the same for peerless as they are in the consolidated papers. Now, if you don't use the equity method, if peerless doesn't use the equity method, then they're not going to be equal. The method we use in this class, they will be equal. Now, balance sheet isn't going to be plus, plus, minus, plus. It's going to be plus, 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 minus. So that would be plus, 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 minus the credits, because assets are credits, debits. <laughs> ah. Ah. And total assets is going to be 1430. For the credit side of the balance sheet, it's going to be plus, plus, minus, plus. 
And we want to make sure also that retained earnings is the same as the statement of retained earnings. So you can see here the statement of retained earnings was 430. It's 430 over here. It's 430 here, 430 here, and everything is equal. And this is these are going to be the numbers for your income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheet. And there's one other thing that I want to point out here that, and I learned this as an accountant at Deloitte, that when you're doing this kind of work, you want to look at the numbers and see if they make sense. Because usually numbers that are wrong don't make sense and numbers that are right do make sense. So you want to look at these numbers very carefully to see if they make sense. You look at sales and make sure that it adds across cost of goods sold adds across this is equal to this statement of retained earnings for the consolidated entity is the same as peerless all the numbers are the same because retained earnings the only real retained earnings is the retained earnings of the parent and likewise with all of these things and you just kind of look through the numbers and see if there's anything weird here that you that also needs adjustment and then these numbers here, these are your financial statements. The interesting thing is that these debits and credits, as I mentioned before, they're elimination entries. They're not traditional journal entries that go on anyone's books. And therefore, they, for purposes of these financial statements, um, they can be pretty much, um, they're just left on the spreadsheet. And you need to keep them in mind as you move forward what you did last year. Now, in the real world, what you would do is um, you have three sets of books. You have peerless, you have special, and then you have the elimination entity. So what you'll do is you'll have a third set of books with your elimination entries, and you store your elimination entries in them. And then when you consolidate, you just add together the three sets of books all together. So in essence, what a business would do if it was doing this, and by the way, any medium-sized business could have hundreds of entities to consolidate. When you're doing this, your elimination entries would be a set of books and you would keep track of how much is in all of these different elimination balances. And then when it comes time to consolidate, you just add them all together.